Hi everyone, Patty here again from Tinkerer's Paradise. I want to, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of kind of groggy today, I guess. Um, I, my foot has been a lame foot. I did something to it the other day. I was walking up the steps and I decided I was going to fall up the steps with a flat of plants in my hands. Oh boy. Yeah. Grace, my middle name, <laughs> sometimes. Anyhow, I was just thinking it's Tuesday and I need to get a, excuse me, a video out. Sounds like I need a nap too, doesn't it? The, uh, the tinkerer decided he's taking the week off and right now he uh, went to get my, run my car through DEQ, one of those wonderful things we have to do here in Portland, um, and make sure that it passes. It'll probably pass with flying colors. It usually does. So that'll be nice getting that done, but uh, so I'm sitting out here in the garden. The husband has one more um, load of fill sand to put down before he's going to feel like getting the uh, pavers settled. And by the way, we got our new pavers. Yes, they're sitting in the driveway. I put it on my Instagram. And I'm really... Uh, really looking forward to this and I'm also thinking about the plan that I devised and uh, one thing I learned in landscape design class was that landscape plans are a guideline they're not written in stone and sometimes when you go to actually apply your plan you might find there's things that you really want to kind of move around and, and work differently with and that's kind of what I'm thinking here, because as I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here um, in the corner of the garden, and it's really nice right now. The sun is at my back. It's, it's never right overhead here, because we're above the 45th parallel, so it's like 45 degrees all the time. Yeah, so I try to grow things up trellises, and it doesn't matter if the trellis is straight up. Um, it will want to head to the sun. So I have to plant on the back side of a trellis, on the north side of a trellis, in order for it to come up over the top of the trellis. So I kind of put my trellises all at, in, in one, at one angle. You'll see when everything gets installed here what that's like. But So anyway, I'm sitting here and uh, it's really nice and shady right now here. And I'm thinking about how the sun goes across here and the shadows and where they fall. That's something that's important when you're planning a garden, um, when you're planning where you're going to put your vegetables or where you're going to plant perennials or put in a tree, any of those things. And for us, we want to have this corner as kind of a little getaway where we can come and enjoy some dinner or in, enjoy a nice cool drink in the evening um, when it's hot out because it's really nice out here. We have a uh, we have a breeze almost all summer long that comes in from the coast um, kind of a, it comes from the northwest so it's a south what they see southeasterly <laughs> wind. I'm terrible at those things because I never learned them but Anyway, it always makes it really nice out here. So it's really the perfect spot for us to, to be in the summertime instead of on our deck next to our house. That's probably a better spot in the morning, though. I got to say, in the morning, on a cooler morning, being out here with the sun coming up and getting those first warm rays of the sun, that'd be pretty nice, too. So anyway, I'm going to kind of show you what I'm talking about here, and we'll uh, have this be kind of a little tutorial video today. Okay, here we go, and I'm going to try and do this gracefully this time. There's all my pretty plants over there. Oh, excuse me, I'm getting out of a deck chair. My old bones don't move very good anymore. <laughs> yep. So anyway, you can see how gloriously big and wide. I'm kind of in the middle of this. And then over here, that's where I was sitting, right there in that chair, right? That chair right there. And we have the lilac and the soon to be fully leafed out um, redbud tree. 
this will all be shade almost all of it and then later in the day this is all shady in here so I think I might reduce our beds a little bit maybe or reconfigure them so that I get more of a uh, patio back here maybe or whatever I think so I'm just thinking just thinking out loud here but I just wanted to share that with you uh, by the way when I was sitting in the chair I was smelling that oh my word I wish I had smell-o-vision on this thing it is absolutely the best fragrance and it is it is that really dark lovely purple can you smell it <laughs> don't you wish yeah between that and this guy here or this lady Carol Mackey yeah so oh look at my I wanted to show you this I love this um, I kind of claw the way it just just falls over this used to be a much bigger clump but I have given away a lot of it <laughs> as I tend to do oh, and I want to show you this over here my husband has become quite the fruit man he's he's really um, really liking fruits so I might do the do the other things and he'll do the fruits so I'm kind of hoping he gets into the vegetables too this is we actually have two different berry vines on here we have one that is thornless and then we have one that has thorns and I don't know what this other one is I think one of them might be a raspberry the other one's a loganberry which is actually a cross between a blackberry and a raspberry and look at here and we already have bees looking around here so I'm pretty happy yeah, this will we'll get a pretty good production of some fruit off of there. I've noticed that there are a lot of bumblebees around here. Now we have a lot of bare soil and they tend to be soil dwellers. I don't know if you can I'm trying to catch him. So please excuse me. Excuse the really crappy camera work. Where is he? Oh, there he is. I don't know if you can see him down there. Can you see the bee down there? Oh, there's a big yellow bumblebee, yellow and black bumblebee. I need to find out what kind they are. They're really interesting bees. I saw somebody posting the other day, or yesterday actually, one of my friends on Facebook was posting about a birdhouse that's full of these, this one kind of bumblebee here. And it was really full of bees and we were all just jealous. We all really wanted that. I'm going to fertilize my babies today, see if I can't get them to green up a little bit. They're looking pretty sad still. And, uh, yeah, all this will get fertilized today. Oh, what a crazy, crazy thing this is right now. We've got plants everywhere, and this is looking so nice, though. I'm so happy. Look at this. There was wood up against that, so the moisture kind of made it nasty, but we'll fix that. We'll uh, apply some, uh, probably, oh, I think probably just some bleach to it and get it to settle in really good and then wash it off really well and take care of it from there. Uh, put a mold-resistant uh, paint on it. I would like to do like a mural here. I think that would be really great. And hey, maybe have it wrap around here. And this is where we're going to have that. We're going to have an overhang and a six inch or six inch. Listen to me. I can't talk at all today. A six foot um, like a patio here that will go all the way around. I think that's going to be fabulous, don't you? <laughs> I'll have a place to, to hang my tools and to do my plant work. Normally, when I do uh, propagation, I use just a couple of these inexpensive plastic um, sawhorses, and I put a piece of, uh, uh, like a three foot by four foot piece of exterior plywood down, and that lasts for years. And it's big enough that I can, I can put my big tub, that big black tub over there, 
that one right there. That is what I put my potting soil in. I put a whole bag and then some of potting soil in there so I can pot up a lot of plants. I'm going to get my, my calendula. This is the Racina calendula from Baker Creek. This is my celery act that really needs to get in the ground. I keep telling my husband it really needs to be in the ground. My onions, they need to, they're ready for the ground. Oh, I gotta get this guy out of here. This is my Okinawa spinach. Yeah, this is the Okinawa spinach that I'm growing. And it is, ah, oh, it's such a tasty plant. If you guys, if you guys haven't tried this, I really recommend that you do. Baker Creek has it. Um, I haven't looked for it in the store. I'm thinking I might. I'm going to put it over here in the shade. Um, I'm thinking I might to see if I can see if I can find some and maybe find some that's organically produced. Not that I really need to because I can make more plants out of these plants. These are my mother plants. Uh, we'll be eating off of these and I'll be doing some more propagation. This little calendula is one from last year, and you can see how lovely it looks in the purple. That's why I like these purple ones. Yep, that purple's pretty nice. I haven't seen anything that color this year. I've seen a lot of other colors that whoever does the ordering for these stores thinks look good in the garden. I have not seen cobalt blue, and I have not seen the lavender like my chairs. I love these chairs. They're the perfect color for a garden because they're like that lavender blue. It's really nice out here. Yeah, I wish it were here. So what do you think? This is gonna be the last time you'll see this looking like this. I'm counting on that. So, yeah. So anyway, I think I'm just gonna keep this short and sweet today. And I uh, just wanna say thank you for spending time with me. And I hope you have a really wonderful day. I look forward to showing you more progress in the very near future. So stay tuned. This is Patty, the tinkerer's wife, saying so long. God bless.